this is what I'll say about that. I believe that popularity has its place. God don't need no celebrities. He already had one. His name was Jesus. Oh, God don't need you to be a celebrity to get his message across. This is what people who think popularity is so necessary. And I have to have this platform and I have to have this. Yes, it is. Popularity can be helpful, but you can be a nobody from nowhere that God gives a platform. And immediately because God gave you a platform and a word, you became popular. You were not able to give that word because you had a platform. You were able to convey that word because God gave you one and he picked you to speak his word on the platform. So we, we we're putting the, we're putting the cart before the horse. We're, we're not understanding that that's not the, the first thing is not your platform. The first thing is the call. The first thing is the anointing. The first thing is the favor of God. The first thing is he chose you. It's the message. Yeah. It, it's the message of Jesus Christ and God wants his son to be glorified in this earth. He wants to glorify himself through his son. So if he picks you to be able to convey the message of Jesus Christ to the world, it's not because you popular and I'm God. What am I going to do without you? You know what he going to do without you? Keep being God. Mm. You and you and all of the rest of the popular, super uber famous people could die tomorrow. And God is still going to be God. And everybody that comes into this earth, earth afterwards is going to probably find out about Jesus and get to know God, whether they choose him or not. So God can use you, but he don't need you. Don't make yourself that necessary. You're not Jesus. Well, here's the other thing, because you said God only, God only had one superstar, one celebrity, one, you know, it was Jesus, right? So we look at Jesus's life. How did he deal with popularity? It's a couple times in the Bible. It says that when people came after Jesus, he dipped. Like yep. he, 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 he ran away from the crowd. He shunned it. You know what I mean? He was like, nah, I'm not, oh, y'all want me? To, and, and then they were coming after him to be the king that they thought he was going to be. And he was running, like literally running from them. You know, because he didn't come for that. He he was about his father's business. I'm not here to be a. I'm not here to be the kind of king you want me to be, a popular king that's going you know take you away from this Roman rule and blah 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 and all the stuff. And like like today, you know, we popular for whatever reason people want us to be popular for. But as a Christian, it's like that ain't why I'm here. That ain't why I'm doing this. So if that's not why I'm doing it. There's going to be a lot of, th- I'm, I'm going to move differently than everybody else. You know what I mean? Everybody's trying to do X, Y, Z to come up and be popular and be known. But if I'm not about that, I'm about my father's business, I'm going to move differently from you. You're going to see me doing, I, I, may, I may get off social media and go uh, fade to black. And y'all be like, where's, where's Teddy and Tina? Like, we ain't seen them. Because I'm not moving how y'all moving because I don't want what y'all want. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm not after what y'all after. There's a mixture that's going on in the culture now. It's like a little bit of Jesus, a lot bit of us. You know what I mean? And so you starting to see that, you know, when people's posts and, you know, how they get down on social media and stuff. So it's really, it, like my wife was saying, there's a, there's a place for the popularity. But I also believe that the Lord needs to be choosing us. And we, sh- we can't be out here choosing ourselves. I want to be, I want to be. And it's a dream. It's my dream to be on stage. It's my dream. I get it. I understand that. I want to be able to worship on big platforms. <laughs> Worship is not about big platforms. So how do how do you even make those how do you even make those statements at the same time? Now I do understand this. A lot of people are young, a lot of people are immature, and a lot of people don't have great understanding. I had a much different perspective when I was younger. I had not matured. I had not had enough experience with God and the devil. I had not realized all of the pitfalls of these wonderful platforms. Um, And so, you know, there were aspirations that I had that I had. I didn't, I never aspired to be famous. Um, I literally always thought I was something. I just did. I was like, I come, I'm loved. The spirit of Jesus is inside of me. I'm God's daughter. You know, I'm something in my family. Yeah, I'm something in my family. I'm something at my church. Like, I have value before I ever ran into all of these famous people and and, and all of this platform. So they thought I was something when I sang at the church. So I didn't necessarily need to sing on a bigger platform to think I was something. I was applauded and supported elsewhere. So when more people support you, it doesn't mean you're better. If you've got the support of two people and they love you and they're going to hold you down, to me, that's better than 2,000 people that will leave you as soon as you're not popular anymore. You know, Mm. so I think a lot of times people, they have the wrong goal. The goal is to glorify God wherever he places you. And then another thing that people do not realize that 
um, popularity can be purposeful, but popularity can absolutely um, bring about your downfall. It can be a massive pitfall for many. Purposeful or painful. Listen, because when people are worshiping you and applauding you and now you don't have any accountability because whatever service or talent or giftedness that you provide for the world, they're so impressed with it. They're so enamored with it. Man, the king of kings didn't even want to be worshipped. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when they start worshiping you, now all of a sudden you believe in it. You didn't mean to believe it. You didn't necessarily get famous for this. You just wanted to feel some sense of value. But since you didn't actually get your value from the God you were worshiping, you started getting it from the people. People. Now you're doing what you do for the people. God is your motivation a little bit and they your motivation a lot bit. And you probably ain't going to be honest about it because you're like, if I don't stay in this popular space, how is God going to be hurt? The same way he was hurt before social media ever happened. The same way he was hurt before there was ever a phone. He got angels. He do not need you. Again, God can use you. But to think that I'm so necessary that God cannot be God without me. God cannot be heard without me. The message of Jesus Christ will not be spread around the world if I don't have this is a very arrogant and ignorant statement to make. I want to I want to clear what I just said and we can move on. When I said that uh, even the king of kings didn't want to be worshipped. Well, Jesus said, well, I didn't come. I didn't come to be served, but to serve right, and give my life as a ransom, right? He also, when the, when one of those Pharisees, or, 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 or was it a disciple, that called him mass, or good, you know, it was always, it was some Pharisee or whatever, called him good. He was like, who are you calling good? There's nobody good but God, right? So, and, and then he went to this cross and took on the sins of the world. And so what I mean by it is like, we got, we got the celebrity, we got the greatest man who ever lived, you know, on, on earth. Constantly humbling himself. So, and we want to be exhausted, exalted. Everything that he said, everything about his life says that I'm humbling myself and I will never, even though I am God and man, I don't see myself as equal with God. So I humbled myself to the point of death. And now he's given me a name above every name. And so we're not humbling ourselves, which that's God's way to exaltation, to humble yourself, to think, to think less of yourself than most would to bring yourself under the authority of God and always understand that no matter how much the world lifts me up, I'm always at his feet, not in word, but in deed, not in theory, but like really, you know what I mean? And so listen, the high, that accord, it's the word, it's the word of God. Listen, if you humble yourself before the mighty hand of hand of God, he'll exalt you. And so, um, seeking fame and seeking a platform. Um, I don't think we should seek them. I don't think I don't think it's biblical. I, I can't find that one scripture that pushes you, that encourages you to seek these platforms. If you are called and you have been given one, mm. make sure you understand why. Never lose the why, because the what will follow the why. What and how will follow the why. You've been given a platform to glorify your father. To give the message of Jesus Christ, not how can I get what I need from God by doing dot, 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 not all these gimmicks and these antics, which is ain't, ain't nothing but low key witchcraft to try to get what you want. No, it's not about what I can get from God, how God can benefit me. What did he come to do to make my life grand and great? No, my life is here to glorify him. How would he like to do that? And whatever your will is, Lord, let it be done. You know, I think that that needs to be the perspective and it does not seem to be the perspective. I did not always have that perspective, but thank God for maturation. Thank God for growth, you know? Um, and I think people need to understand that the popular platforms can be a massive pitfall. So many people get on them and they lose their way. So I would not seek them. It might be just why that close intimate relationship that you had gets lost. It gets lost in the popularity, in the platform. Not for everyone, but it could. If you know your why, you won't lose your way. Mm. Yeah. Man, we just went from fast food to faith-filled, phenomenal preaching like that. Like We, <laughs> we are on level 100 right now. <laughs> and I, come down. And for anybody that's just listening to this, your water was literally overflowing. At one point, you, you were, your hands were going, and your cup was like, I saw water just going everywhere, and I was like, if they can't if they can't see it they're hearing it because y'all were overflowing with i mean the energy in here and and the analogy i got from when when you were talking about not everybody is chosen to do this 
Like not like you can't just want to do it. Like oh, oh I'm, I want to do this. I'm gonna be this. I was seeing the the crane game. If you know what I'm talking about. Like when you go to the little arcades, mm -hmm. and and everything in there has value. Every prize has value. We're all valuable. Mm -hmm. right. However, not every prize goes with that every kid. Yeah. Every kid gets a different prize, and they have to be selected to go yeah. with where their mission is to go. And so, and maybe that's just the, the childlikeness in me, it, it, seeing that. No. But I was like, you don't you don't see the claw coming down and grabbing every toy yeah. to go be on mission or on purpose with whoever that, that kid is, you know? Can I tell you what will help that though, will help us actually know if we're picked and know if we're called it's discipleship. It's having someone speak into our lives. It's us being under s submission to someone who God is speaking to, who God is speaking through. Someone of authority, some leader, some pastor, some someone that can actually help you and guide you. Because as young kids, that's all we got, man. All we got is our dreams. You know, it's like, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. And yes, you're supposed to have this passion and this desire and this hunger to serve the Lord. You're supposed to have that energy to serve the Lord. But here comes the older brother, sister, the father figure, whatever. It's like, okay, now let's walk this thing out. How are we, what are we going to do if God gives us this platform? How are we going to live when we get there? What's going to be our, what are we going to focus on when we get there? What's going to be more important to us when we get there? What's well, our accountability once we're that. there? Mm -hmm. I, if you look at the, if you look at, if you look, let's look at, look at how Jesus did it. Jesus is our example. We Christians, Jesus is your example. And any other example that is not Jesus, don't never forget that Jesus always usurps anybody else that he saved. He's the savior. Okay. And so we got to look at the example of Jesus. Jesus came, humbled himself, and everything that came out of his mouth is, I'm here to do the will of my father, not my will, but thine be done. Lord, can you let, can you let this cup pass for me? Nope, not my will. Like, listen, not my will, but yours be done. So he's about his father's business, right? He humbled himself and he discipled those that were supposed to uh, 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 convey the message, uh, convey his message once he left. You understand what I'm saying? And then the rest of the disciples, they were accountable to each other. Apostle Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. He was accountable to other to the other apostles in the faith. Here he is, the new apostle. When Paul lost his way, Peter. I mean, when Peter, when Peter lost his, Peter. like, this is the one <laughs> you came in up under him. Like he mentored you to some degree, but when he lost his way, he was like, we are all accountable to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when any of us lose our way, we ought to be subject to our other brothers and sisters in faith. So I don't know how we have these lone rangers who come up in here like high hell silver. I'm finna come up in here to hero. I'm finna save the day. It's just, I found Jesus and I don't need all of that. He gave me an anointing. No, 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 no. If you can't submit yourself to man, you're not submitted to God. Hmm. If you're a wife and you can't submit yourself to your own husband, you are not submitted to God. I'm telling off on my own self. I've had a submission problem much of my marriage, much, probably more than two thirds of my marriage because I saw my mom do it and I thought that didn't really work out for her. So God, I'll do a lot of things, but I'm not going to do that and I'll do it to, a, I'm not going to say I won't, won't do it, God, because I, you know, I believe that your way is right, but I'm going to do it to a certain degree. Mm. So I figured I would direct how I would do it's God's, my will and God, your yeah, will. my will and yours, like your <laughs> will, but my, my flow, you know what I mean? It like was a, It was a two wheel. It wasn't a unicycle. It was listen, a bicycle. Okay. Told, told myself, I, this little motorcycle yeah, yeah. God. I went on and told myself all the way up, trying to put my little, in, my little two cents with God's way. Mm. And so when you think that you are so anointed and you are so gifted that you are not subject to anyone that you won't hear the voice of reason, that no one can correct you. The Bible says if you can't be corrected, you a fool. And so you have these people who are such an authority and I'm the father of the gospel. Who told you that? Show me that in the Bible. Who made you this father and this authority where you're not subject to anyone? So if you're a Christian, first of all, like Teddy said, you need to be discipled. You need to be discipled. And a lot of times we allow people to call us and God ain't called us. Then was your homeboys that called you. Well, I'm a pastor because my dad was.
God called your daddy, he ain't necessarily called you. You supposed to be a deacon. You supposed to be a cold blooded deacon. But you ain't supposed to actually lead the church. The one back there with the toe up life that I'm finna transform, he the one supposed to be the pastor, the one that y'all kicking out the church. I'm gonna do something with him and in ten years he gonna be my man right here. You know what I mean? But we used to be so busy calling calling ourselves and looking at things and giving things an identity from what we see, but God sees much deeper than we see. Um and the power and the anointing that he gives is much greater than anything that any man can give you or what you could learn at school and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we have this, this, I think it's a problem with calling ourselves and standing alone and, uh, I'm an, I'm anointed and I'm gifted and, um, I don't need anybody cause I know that God told me this. If God told you this, he's going to make you subject to some other people, especially other believers. So you got to have somebody that disciples you and that you can be up under authority. Hey y'all, we hope you loved this conversation here at Young Married Christian. We are on a mission to see a gospel centered home made available for every single child in the foster care system. There are 400,000 kids in the foster care system and there are 400,000 churches in America. Wow. That is crazy. This is absolutely a solvable problem, and we want to be a part of it. If you want to join us in that mission, text the word FREEDOM to 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. And another thing you can do that is really helpful is to smash the like button on this video. Smash it like Satan's face. Crush it like it's Lucifer's head. It really helps us a ton. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. That's it. <laughs> smash the like button on this video.